English like what English? This is why we should script our videos, Jan, but that's a lot of work. Ah. Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with my April wrap-up for 2017. I read a total of 12 books this month, which I am actually so surprised with because it was exam season, so I thought I was going to get like two books maybe done. But apparently I like to procrastinate. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> So the first book that I read in the month of April was Anne and Henry by Don Eus. This book is a modern day retelling of the story between King Henry VII and Anne Boleyn. I ended up actually really enjoying this book. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The book is very fluffy but it still has some dark twists to it which I really enjoyed. I liked Anne as a main character. She's very sassy and spunky, but she was also very sensitive and caring at the same time. I liked Henry, but he was kind of annoying at times because he was so easily swayed by what other people said. And then one other thing I had a problem with was the amount of slut shaming in the book. Like it was obsessive after a while and it just got really annoying. I thought it was a pretty good book and if you want a very quick read then I would recommend this one. The second book that I read in the month of April is Someone Like You by Sarah Dessen and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars as well. The book follows Hallie and Scarlett who have been best friends since they were very young. Hallie has always been the quiet one and she's relied on Scarlett for a lot of things. One night when Hallie is away for a camping trip, she gets a call from Scarlett saying that her boyfriend Michael died in a motorcycle accident. When she discovers that she is pregnant with Michael's baby, Scarlett needs Hallie more than ever. And it's basically the story of their friendship and what happens after that phone call. I really liked how Sarah Dessen portrayed teenage pregnancy and how hard it can actually be. See, I find that in a lot of YA books, they kind of like romanticize teenage pregnancy and it's kind of like, hey, it's never that easy, stop. But in this book, it was very obvious that Scarlett was struggling, but there was also some good things in it as well. I loved reading about Hallie and Scarlett's friendship and how strong it was and how they both supported each other so much with what they were going through. I really hated Mason though. He was such an egotistical jackass and just the way he treated Hallie made me so angry. I relate to the story so much. When I was 16, I was dating this guy that was totally not good for me and I should not have been dating him, but you know, young love, you know, young love, not real love, young love. I constantly rebelled against my mom, turned away from her. When you're told you're not allowed to do something, it makes you want to do it more. So I completely related to how Hallie was feeling and how she wanted to keep seeing Mason even though her mom said it wasn't a good idea. Totally related to her story and I really loved how Sarah Dessen portrayed the relationship because it's very true to how it actually is. The third book that I read for the month of April is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. This book follows a set of twins who were best friends when they were younger, but something happens to between them and now they barely speak. It's told in dual perspective, 13-year-old Noah is trying to navigate between falling in love for the first time and 16-year-old Jude is trying to live with the guilt that she feels because she got into the art school of Noah's dreams and he didn't. I ended up loving this book way more than I thought I would. I ended up giving it a 5 out of 5 stars. As I said, the book is told in dual perspective between 13-year-old Noah and 16-year-old Jude, so it's the past and the present at the same time. I loved that part of the book. I thought it was so well done. The plot was woven so well together that it didn't really get confusing at all, which I thought it would. I really loved Noah and I really felt for him when he was trying to figure out who he was and how he was feeling. And I also really loved Jude and how wild and quirky she was. I really liked Oscar and Jude's relationship. Although I find it very frustrating at times and it got kind of annoying at some times as well. I still really liked them together. And Brian and Noah made my heart so happy. I really liked Guillermo as a character. I thought he was so wise and just everything he said just... I resonated with it so much. I loved him. I honestly loved all the characters. I thought they were all very well done. They were all not perfect. They all had their own flaws and they all made mistakes which made it so much more relatable. I really liked the sibling relationship as well between Noah and Jude. I really liked reading about how their relationship changed throughout the three years that the story was told through. I just highly recommend this book. 
book in general. You should probably read it, but you probably have because everybody has. The fourth book that I read in the month of April is Grasshopper Jungle by Andrew Smith. And I actually didn't really end up liking this book at all. I ended up giving it a two out of five stars on Goodreads. The book follows Austin Zerba, who is a very horny Polish boy. His best friend, Robbie Breeze, is gay. Austin loves his girlfriend, Shan, but he also thinks that he may be in love with his best friend, Robbie. The three of them live in a very boring town called Ealing, Iowa. One night, Robbie and Austin are on an adventure, and they end up unleashing this strain of a virus that turns people into six-foot praying mantises, and this is basically the end of the world. I honestly finished this book not knowing what I just read. I was very confused throughout the whole thing. I hated the repetition in the book. It got very annoying very quickly. Pretty much every other line was either about Austin being horny, or something about fucking eating sperm or balls. At first it was kind of amusing, but then it got to the point where it was literally every other line, and it was like so annoying that I found myself rolling my eyes throughout the whole book because it just got to the point where I was like, this needs to stop. I also don't think any of the characters actually developed in any way in this book, so it was kind of boring and bland to me. So yeah, two out of five stars. I didn't like it, but I know that a lot of people did, so I don't know if it's just me. The fifth book that I read in the month of April is Reality Boy by A.S. King, and I actually really did love this book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows Gerald Faust, who was part of a reality show called Network Nanny when he was 5 years old, and ever since that show aired, he has been called The Crapper. Now 17, Gerald is very angry and very resentful about how the show perceived him. His sister Tasha is a psychopath and is basically trying to kill him and his parents do nothing but enable her. To make matters worse, his older sister Lisey, who is the only person he trusted, moved away to Scotland in order to get away from their dysfunctional family. He's obviously very hurt, very angry, and he's about to snap until he meets Register Number One Girl. The story is told in dual perspective between the present and the past, and I really liked that aspect of the story. I really loved the witty banter between Gerald and himself, and also Gerald and Hannah. One major problem I had with the book was the use of the R word in the story was obsessive, in my opinion. I hate that word. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know, like, it's one of my pet peeves in books. I don't see the point of it. Although I do understand the relevance to the story and why it was placed there. I just, I hate the word, so I was cringing every time I had to read it. Still not 100% sure how I feel about Gerald and Hannah's romance. At times I really enjoyed it, but then other times I thought it was very unhealthy. So I'm still kind of iffy on it, but I did love the writing style and I loved it when we got transported to Jared's day. Those were my favorite scenes in the whole book. The sixth and seventh book are part of the same trilogy. The first book is The Adoration of Jenna Fox, and the second one is The Fox Inheritance, and they're both by Mary E. Pearson. I ended up giving this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I'll follow 17-year-old Jenna Fox, who has been in a coma for over a year, and when she awakens, she doesn't remember anything that happened. So she tries to piece the puzzle together of her past and what actually happened, and that's when her memories start to come back to her. I really enjoyed Jenna as a main character. I thought that her growth and development was so well done. I thought that a lot of the side characters were kind of not needed in the story and they were just kind of thrown in there for placement. But I really did enjoy Lily, who is Jenna's grandmother, and I loved her development in the story as well. I did really like how the romance took more of a backseat to the main narrative of the story, but I did really like Ethan as a love interest. There were a lot of underlying issues that the author tried to bring up, especially medical ethics, so I really like that part of the story as well. And then The Fox Inheritance is the second book in the trilogy. You could honestly read it as a book on its own without reading the first one because it it's a connected story, but it's not really needed in order to understand what happens. It follows Jenna, Kara, and Locke, who were in an accident that caused their minds to be locked into little black boxes when their body was no longer able to function. They spent decades together in a never-ending vortex until one day Jenna disappeared, which, which is what happens in the first book, so this is where it starts to make sense. 260 years later, Kara and Locke are woken up from their little black boxes. They have newly functioning bodies, but they have no idea how this new world works, and everybody they once loved is long gone except for Jenna Fox. It's told in Locke's perspective, and it's basically Kara and Locke going to find Jenna and the adventure that comes from that. I did really like this book. I thought it was a great sequel, but I don't think that I'm going to continue with the series. Because I just don't see a point of a third book. I thought it wrapped up pretty well in this book, although it kind of does 
leave you with a cliffhanger. I'm not really that interested in figuring out what happens to the characters. The next book that I read is One Night That Changes Everything by Lauren Barnhold, and I ended up giving this a 1.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows Eliza, who keeps a little notebook of everything that she is afraid of. When she ends up realizing that she lost this notebook, she goes into a panic trying to find it. She ends up getting a phone call from her ex-boyfriend, Cooper, and that's when things get interesting. He has her notebook, and his friends and he want her to do multiple tasks from her list in order to get it back, or they're going to post the whole thing online. The entire book takes place in one night, which I did enjoy. But the main character, Eliza, really got on my nerves. She just bothered me so much. I found her so whiny and annoying and just I could not deal with her. I really didn't like Eliza's best friends, Clarice and Marissa. They were terrible best friends. They were constantly just ditching Eliza in order to hang out with whatever boy was in the picture of their lives at that time. And it just got to the point where it was like, okay, they have left you 20 million times and you're just totally fine with it. I personally would be so mad. But then at the end of the book, she's going on about how they are such great friends. I also really didn't like the writing style of this book. It got super annoying, super fast. Every other word was, oh my god, or like, I can't believe she did that, and it was, I just could not deal with it after a while. Every character in the story was underdeveloped and really boring, and I really didn't like Cooper and how he used Eliza, and how Eliza tried to act all tough all the time, and then she just ended up running back to Cooper anyways, and it was just like, wh What are you doing, young lady? No. I would not recommend any teenager that is like 14, 15 to read this book. Which is, I'm pretty sure the age group targeted for this book because it just, it promotes unhealthy relationships and I do not like it and I just, no, just, no. The next book that I read is my favorite book of this month. I love it so much. It is Radio by Sophia Elaine Hansen. I don't want to give a synopsis of it because it is the second book in the vinyl trilogy. But all you need to know is that I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It's incredible. Highly recommend it. Read vinyl. Read radio. Third book. Don't know the title yet. It's coming out in 2018, so read that too. And that's all. You should read this book. The tenth book that I read in the month of April is Lock and Key by Sarah Dessen. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The book follows Ruby Cooper, who was abandoned by her mother, so she has been living by herself for a few months in the yellow house that they rent. When the adults in her life discover that she's living alone, they ship her off to live with her sister Cora who she hasn't seen in 10 years, and her husband, Jamie. She's reluctant to accept any of the help that Cora and Jamie try to give her, and that's when she meets the boy next door named Nate, and things begin to change as his secrets come out. I did enjoy the story, but I thought it was kind of average in my opinion. I did like the character development of Ruby, and I loved reading about the relationship between Cora and Ruby as well. My favorite part was the dog Roscoe who peed on literally everything and every scene he was in. It made me so happy and he was the highlight of the book for me. So like that kind of tells you it was just an average book. The 11th book that I read for the month of April is Every Day by David Levithan and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows A who is neither a boy or a girl. They are a shifter which means that they wake up in a different body every single day. They live in this body for the duration of the day, and then the next morning they wake up in a new one, and so forth and so forth for their entire life. I really liked the concept of this book. I thought it was so intriguing, and I really, really enjoyed it. I was surprised that I liked it as much as I did, because I seem to have a love-hate relationship with David Levithan, where I usually hate his writing, but I really enjoyed this one. I loved the diversity in this book, and how different every single body that A woke up in was and I really loved how the book made you think about what you would do if you were put in Rhiannon's spot and like how you would react to it. I loved A as a main character. I thought they were so great and I loved their inner monologue. I don't know how I feel about Rhiannon. At times I loved her, at times I hated her. I'm kind of iffy with her, but overall I really enjoyed the story. And the final book that I read for the month of April is Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I actually really, really liked it. It follows 9-year-old Mary B. Addison, who killed 3-month-old Alyssa Rogerson, allegedly. She was prosecuted and put into baby jail, but now at 16, she finds herself in a group home and pregnant. Mary wants to take the SATs, go to college, keep her baby, 
But all of this seems impossible, unless she tells the truth of what happened that night. I did really enjoy the story, I thought it was very interesting, and I did love Mary as a character. I thought she was super complex. I did find that the story was kind of slow near the middle and it got kind of boring, but it ended up picking up a lot during the end chapters and I did find it a little bit hard to read at times. There's definitely some difficult topics that they talk about like abuse and racism and how unfair the justice system can actually be. I really like how the story was interwoven with like newspaper articles and parts of uh, books about Mary and her crime and it was just really fascinating to me to learn about what actually happened. It definitely didn't feel like a debut novel so I'm very excited to see what the author comes up with next and I would actually highly recommend this book if you're into like mystery psychological thrillers. I really liked it. Alright guys, I hope that this video doesn't end up being like 20 million minutes long, it probably will, so I'm sorry in advance if it is, well I guess it's after the fact now, but whatever, let me know down below if you read any of these books and how you like them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!